You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion and be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wavelight procedure cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening! My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. 
And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate. I know jiu-jitsu. I drive like a gang. So when I'm coming to see you, see you, see you, see you. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. Wednesday, my dudes. Otherwise known as Chat Lives Matter Night, right here live on KLRRadio.com. I'm one half of the crew for the opening act this evening. This is the Whatever Show, and with me is Miss Stacy. And good evening, Miss Stacy. How are you? Oh, I'm fabulous. You're fabulous. Like throwing Skittles I'm fabulous. fabulous. <laughs> Yesterday I was up for 27 hours straight. Yeah. Um, and then I slept for eight and then I got up and I drove six hours. So my filter is non-existent. Uh, wait, you had a filter before? Mm-hmm. This could be fun. <laughs> Look, I'm not, I, I try not to swear. I try really hard on this show not to swear. I mean, I play a disclaimer and everything. What are you worried about? <laughs> because my former show co-host impressed upon me that I should not swear. Yeah, well. Because at the time, we were doing the whole terrestrial thing, and so we couldn't swear. And I would get yelled at when I had to get beeped out. Yeah. So. I've been trained not to swear, to come up with unique words and funny sayings and things like ha ha ha. So that's what I do. I mean, but, tonight, today, that today that may not happen. Yeah, we 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 don't have a dumb button over here, so you're, you're fine. But that's why we have a disclaimer. So no be, no bleeping, no beeping. Much to the chagrin of my dad, who occasionally tunes in, is like, you know, for a preacher, you have a pretty filthy mouth. I said, like, thank you. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, so, yes, I do, but thank you for noticing. Just, we should all just take a brief moment since Rick and I have been off the air for a little bit and um, ponder the emotional incontinence we've been seeing in our youngsters across the country for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know what you here's, I, yeah. Here's what I'm going to say. Go ahead. <laughs> if there is a viral video of your child being asked what river and what sea and they can't answer – and they're at this protest, or they're being asked what they're protesting and can't answer, and they're at these protests, go grab them by the ear and take them home because they need to grow up a little bit before they can be on their own. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Ordy and I played a clip of that. I think it – I don't remember. I don't – it wasn't last week because I, I didn't do shows last week uh, for the most part, but um, – the week before, I think, was when I when he found the clip of the the two female protesters who were being interviewed, and they were asking, well, "So, what are you here for?" And we're like, "Well, we think the uni- we think the university should be more understanding." Blah 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 blah. And they're like, "Well, no. What are you actually protesting?" She turns to her friends and says, "I don't really know. Do you know why we're here?" I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> they need to talk to the or- 
organizer. Uh, I'm just thinking they're they're chanting right behind you about Palestine, and you don't even okay. know why you're here. <laughs> if you are the parent of any of these children, you raise them so well that communists can turn them into astroturf. Pretty much. Because that probably represents about 70% of the kids at these protests. They got trained during the, you know, March for Our Lives and all this other, oh, we're out of class. There's a protest. We can skip class, right? That's what it was about for those stupid gun protests. And now that's what it's about when they're supporting a terrorist organization. I'm telling you. Like, you really need to just bring these kids home and teach them a little discernment. Seriously. Well, my question is, why did you let them leave the house without teaching them discernment first anyway? I mean, that's kind of an important life skill, the same. Well, you gotta remember, the ones that are there right now are a little emotionally crippled because they were, like, high schoolers when everything shut down for COVID. Well, I guess you have a point there. <laughs> so, some of this we did to them, but I think maybe they need some remedial parenting or some remedial socialization or some remedial something because whatever they got as an education during the formative years during the pandemic did not cut the, cut the mustard. Well, I mean, that's because that, that's because they were, you know, Zoom calls and everything else. And then probably weren't even, I mean, dude, can you, can you imagine? I mean, it was hard enough when I was working for OU because we were hearing all the time about how people were goofing off instead of doing their jobs. I mean, I, I wasn't one of those people because they, they made me behave because I was I wasn't upper management, but I was part of the management team, so I, I had to set the example and stuff. But everybody was having to come back into the office once they gave the all clear because the people were going on written warnings and stuff because they were just goofing off instead of doing their job. I can, so We're talking about adults. I can imagine what these kids were like in these Zoom calls and everything else. Like, the teacher doesn't have any idea that they have another browser open that they're playing like Minecraft or some shit. Well, it's just like... I just, and now you have a professor at one of the universities saying he's not going to give any students a grade unless the unless the university lets all the suspended students back. Like, excuse me, who do you think you are? Well, this would be time to remind universities that while, yes, most professors have a thing called tenure, tenure is not permanent, and it's also not a license to be stupid. So that person Well, it's that. also not a license not to fulfill the basic duties of your job, one of which is to provide your students with a grade as required by the campus. But like, I... Tenure is meant to protect you from having stupid opinions, and while that is a stupid opinion that these kids should come back to school... You still need to perform the basic functions of your job. Not performing the basic functions of your job is not covered under um, freedom of conscience and freedom of speech. Well, I mean, it, well, this is the other thing that it drives me absolutely crazy, and this is something that I've had to explain over and over and over again because everybody's talking about their constitutional rights to protest. That does not apply on private property. True. The, the universities are considered private property with public access. Just like, remember back in the day when we went into malls and they had all these posted rules about you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't wear this shirt, you can't say these words. That's because it's private property with public access, meaning they can regulate whether you're allowed to come in or not based on whether or not you adhere to whatever their codes are. Those schools have a code of conduct. You have to read through it, acknowledge it, and say that you're going to follow it. Not just do this. And I'm, I, now things like this have happened in smaller pockets for a long time. Like I remember, I think it was in like the late 80s. So there was a group that like took over like one of the commons areas in Berkeley or something, if I remember right. So this isn't new. Oh, Dart, Dartmouth too. But, I, oh, those pro, yeah, they had some, they had some protests. Well, obviously we had everything in the, in, you know, 65 to 68 and by 71, they were blowing, it leaked off campus and they were blowing up like three to four buildings a day or three to four sites a day. Um, but uh, in the in the late 80s, it was apartheid in South Africa. But, I mean, and even then, though, the response was enough that it didn't spin out the way it has here. I mean, there were, there were a couple of oh, pockets yeah. here and there. But when it came right down to it, people were like, okay, we've had enough. The thing about it is it's taken them, what are we on now, like two months of this crap? 
like like full blown. I think we're up to about two months, and they're just now really starting to crack down. And you've had some schools that are negotiating with these people instead of saying, "Hey, you yeah, s- no, <laughs> you those s- schools you need signed to f- lose all federal funding." Yesterday, you signed a code of code of conduct to go to school here, and you're not following it. So either you go back and do what you're supposed to do, or we're going to expel you. It would have been that simple, but they didn't do it. But here, here's the thing about this that drives me absolutely crazy, though, because I've seen this happen on, like, two or three different campuses, and they're really just now starting to talk about it. So they hold all these public votes for, like, the regents and everything to say whether or not they're going to support Palestine. When they hold the votes publicly, the, pal- the Palestinian protesters and the Palestinian group win. But when they move the votes privately, they then lose by over 50%. So this is all. This is all just another offshoot of the cancellation culture. These people are afraid they're gonna. They're, they're afraid they're gonna be harassed. A lot of the students that aren't even Jewish, Jewish at this point are terrified of these people. And it's ju- it's just one of those things where as soon as you give them the freedom to be able to say what they actually want to say, nobody supports this. But they won't say it publicly because they're afraid of what's going to happen if they do. And that's the other thing that just drives me absolutely crazy. Because our this administration is failing us on so many levels. Well, I mean, they're just playing footsies with the terrorists to win the Dearborn vote and the far left student vote. Like they have no concept, okay? Like the vast majority of the students on campus feel like the guys at UNC feel who put the American flag back up. They feel like the guys at Old Miss and just want to mock these people to, to to no end. So. I'm sorry, but this week, thank God for the frat boys, okay? I know, right? Um, you know, who, who but... Have, who would have thought Animal House would save America? I'm just saying. No kidding. But you, you all of a sudden, you see a bigger group standing behind them than standing with the protesters because nobody wants the Palestinian flag ha- flying over their campus. We don't fly other nations' flags here. That's not what we do. Yeah. And I think what they really don't understand, and and call me crazy, okay, but millennials were kind of squishy and kind of anti-American and all that stuff. Gen Z is in the house now, and they're just a little more jingoistic, like they're Gen X parents. Well, and they weren't raised. They weren't raised by hippies. Well, here's the other thing, though. We really need to just figure out how to keep things on, <coughs> not not to riff on another show title of mine but we need to figure out how to keep things on the rails just long enough because gen alpha is coming up and gen alpha is so much like us that it's insane these these kids are like all my my kids are z well no i know but i'm saying even the the group coming in behind them they're all like playing outside again and stuff they're like doing the weird stuff like we used to do i was like if we can just keep things on track just long enough we might be able to save this mess but the problem is i don't know i tried to do that with my kids and nobody else was sending their kids outside like my kids were weird and i was a young mom so a lot of the moms were like older than me so i don't know what generation they were but they were like still all like super organizing their kids i did not do that dude i hate it um, my ex-wife wanted it i'm like dude just let them be kids i mean that's like with my oldest yeah. with my own, oldest bonus son he was probably i guess 8 or 9 and he finally got he finally got to the point where he could ride his bike well enough to not have training wheels on it and the only place that she would let him ride his bike is in the backyard. Oh, like, dude, he's nine years old. Let him go. Let him go ride his bike in a row. He's he's old enough. I can go out there and watch him for a little bit if you're worried about it. We literally fought about that for thirty minutes. You know, I was like, it's ten o'clock on a Saturday morning. Cartoons are over. Get out. Go. Get out. But I mean, get out of the house. That's part of the reason why. I mean, he and. My youngest son are absolutely outdoor kids. They are, well, not kids anymore. Shit, he's about to be thirty-one, and my youngest is about to be twenty-four. God, I'm old. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, um, but I mean, he 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 was he was always out. Once once I talked his mom into letting him off the chain just a little bit, it's like okay, I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna go do that. So and and he's still that way. But it it just astounds me that we now live in a country where Kids have been indoctrinated to the point that they don't even realize – well, some have been indoctrinated. Others are just going along for the ride 
and just there to protest and don't even know why. And I'm just like, this is just. Well, you've also got a whole host of kids, right? Who decided not to go to college because they'd seen their millennial cousins go into crushing debt for no apparent reason, right? So they're out working and doing their thing. And Oatmeal for Brains just decided that they need to pay the tuition of those lunatics. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay? You want to, like, radicalize a generate? You do that, Joe. You do that. <laughs> you do that. It's not going to work for and you. And I really don't think, think the organizers of, the organizers of this are so far left, and many of them are paid agitators that just do what the bosses say. They don't seem to compute that there is no white guilt involved in the Palestinian thing. The only reason BLM was as successful as it was, and you had so many cancellations go on then, and the peer pressure worked so good, is the inherent white guilt that has been bred in because of slavery and the civil rights movement and all of that nonsense. It's the only reason you get away with DEI for any amount of time. The same feeling does not extend to the Middle East. So these protests are going to end up, if they keep like interrupting graduations and interrupting other events and blocking traffic with people trying to go to work over Palestine, they're going to lose any support they had. Because there just not is the, there is not a feeling of goodwill towards terrorists generally. <clears throat> and there's no history that you can play on to make the people feel bad. It's just not going to work. Yeah, I, I just, again, <laughs> I'm just looking at everything and completely scratching my head. Well, they're trying, they're trying so hard, right, to take an oppressor-oppressed narrative and slam it on this. And if you only... If you only consider a conflict for maybe the last 50 years, you might be able to get away with it, even though it still doesn't really fit. But if you go back the full 2000 that this has been going on, and the problem is Americans don't go from that frame of reference, the Jews are hardly the oppressors. <laughs> They've been kicked out of everywhere. And repeatedly genocided. And, you know, there used to be a lot of Christians in the Middle East. There aren't anymore because they're dead. But they're so understood. they didn't get they didn't get their own state. They just got killed. But they're so understood. So these far right people who are saying, like, we actually have more in common with the Muslims than we do in the Jews, be the Jews, because Jesus is in the Quran. You need to go back and take a deeper reading, my friends. We'll just, we'll just, I'm going to start saying this to them on a regular basis. Oh, derka, derka, derka. Because they're full of crap anyway. <laughs> no, there's people, I know. people fighting with me online. I it's know. like, if you lost your damn mind, you understand they say that God cannot be made man in the Quran. They obliterate the entire basis of your faith. They are not on your side. No, they view Jesus as just another prophet. They don't even, they, it kind of, but they don't even really view him as that. He's in the book. He doesn't play any fundamental kind of role, though. He just shows up at the apocalypse because he shows up. Okay? So, yeah, the Jews, the Jews and the Christians may have a disagreement about Jesus' place in the whole, the whole progression the jews believe the messiah is going to come once we think he's going to come again yep okay at least we both believe in an abrahamic god oh that is one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy about my friends that are either agnostic or atheist that try to tell me that muslim that the islam and judaism and christianity are all from the same tree branches and i'm like no actually, no they're, they're not, not. <laughs> I mean, if if you trace it, I can tell. I can actually tell you, chronologically, where the idea of Islam came from, even though it didn't show up until a lot, lot later. This, uh, <clears throat> because everybody seems to forget that it it wasn't just 
uh, Abraham and Isaac, he had another son with a second, with his actual, technically, um, he took a second wife and had a kid with her, even though God told him not to. And that, if you go back and you just, and, and you dig far enough, you're going to be able to find that it traces all the way back to there. That's why it has a lot of, it has a lot of the similarities, but it's a lot darker and a lot angrier. And it's because it all started with a pissed off kid who wasn't chosen by his dad. That's where all of this came from. And, mm-hmm. and it's just, it's, it's so weird to people, for, to me, for people to try to say, well, they're basically from the same place. I was like, no. No, they're, they're not. not. They started in the same place, but they went in a completely different direction because one is really, 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 really dark and hates the entirety of the Jewish people because a disowned son was really, really pissed. Well, kind of like Cain and Abel. Yeah, pretty much. Well, right, minus the rock. So, so minus the rock, but there's only one good side in that 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 relationship. There's yeah. only there's only one good side coming down from Abraham. So please, please, but yeah, no, and yeah, they are botting up Twitter with the Christian nationalist crap. Um, some of it is just such abstract turf. <laughs> I think one of the first times I noticed that there was going to be, that this was going to happen, you know, like the whole Christians and Muslims supposed to be joining forces, is I started seeing this weird-ass meme floating around that had, like, a, a Christian and a Muslim, and they're, like, arm-in-arm locked, looking at each other. Then it's, like, got, like, the mainstream media and all the other stuff around them, and they're looking at each other, like, together? Together, like no, <laughs> no, not together. Go hump your goats in peace. No, actually, no. Um, and I mean that kind of weird propaganda is coming straight out of the Chinese teaching Iran how to like manage perceptions and stuff. That that's what that is. No, I know exactly what it is, but it's also and it's also being allowed to happen. Is not just no, but hell no. Well, it's also being allowed to happen because whether anybody wants to admit it or not, one of the next steps, if you've read the same book that we we have, is to outlaw outlaw every single religion but one. Because you will not be able to do business. You will not be able to do commerce. You won't even be able to buy food unless you follow one very specific religion. And it's, it's, it's... Probably the one that is starting to sprout up all over the place in this country right now. If I'm being completely honest, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, I don't know that for sure, but all I know is I never in a million years thought that, you know, like, what what is it? What was it at one point of, like, 51 campuses where they were doing these encampments? And I'm like, can we just bring out – I know water cannons are supposed to be illegal again, but can we make them – or illegal now, but can we make them not illegal again and just go hose these people down and send them home? Just saying. Just saying. I mean, they wouldn't even have to go on the property to do that, though. Most of them could have just brought the fire trucks in and just pointed the hoses up really high and just let them go and done it from the streets in a lot of cases. Win-win. They don't smell anymore, and they go home. Oh, wait. Did I say that out loud? My bad. But. I don't know. It's just, I'm telling you right now, if I saw one of my kids on TV. <laughs> one of my parents' favorite sayings. No, here's, here's what mine would you Get your ass home right now or I'm cutting you off. Mm. You get not one more dollar. You're embarrassing me? Come home. Yeah, no. My parents' favorite saying when I was growing up was, I brought you into this world and I can take you out. I, I would probably be saying something like that to one of my kids if I saw them on TV. No. Like, <laughs> Get your ass home. I'm not giving you another dollar if you don't. You get home, and you're going to go to work for a little while. You're not going back there. So I feel that you have a fully formed set of values that makes you not do stupid shit like that. Well, and I mean, everybody yells at me about what I'm about to say next, but before we go to break, I especially with everything that we're seeing, with what we now understand about when 
the actual human brain is fully developed to the point where we understand consequences and that usually happens somewhere around age 25 I'm kind of up with like making that like the cutoff for everything. Like you're not an adult till you're 25. You can't join the military. You can't sign contracts. You can't do this. You can't do that. Hey, look. What? You are if you're a boy, your insurance rates don't go down until you're 25. I'm fine with that. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I, I I honestly think that should be um, because the other thing that they have managed to do with society to make everything as confusing as it is is there used to be these clear cut delineations of when you were considered an adult. Now, granted, much earlier in history, it was usually somewhere between, depending on what culture you were in, anywhere between the ages of 13, 15, and 16. But now it's, well, you're an adult when you're 18 because you can do this, but you can't do this until you're 21, and you can't really do this until you're 25, and you can't do this either. And everybody's like, we don't know what we are. We don't know whether we're, I mean, and then you have all of society, well, these college kids, they're not kids. If they're above the age of 18, they're not considered kids anymore. Make them start facing some adult consequences. But I'm old and yell at people to get off my lawn, so I guess I shouldn't say much. But we probably should take a break, because we're about halfway through. Okie doke! Alright, so we're taking a quick break. Coming back. More show left. Don't forget, after us is the conservative curmudgeon radio show. Then it'll be actually kind of a surprise last minute edition because we now have a gap every two weeks Andrew and I are going to be shooting the stuff from about 9 to 10 and then Ordy and I should finish off your night but we're going to take the break and then we will be right back you are listening to whatever on klnradio.com You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion to be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wavelength procedure cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening. Hi. I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you.
We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate, I know jiu-jitsu, I drive like a gay, so when I'm coming to see you, see you. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. And welcome back into the program, ladies and gentlemen. Second, final segment of the Whatever program coming up right now. Don't forget, after us, we have the Conservative Commudgeon Radio Show with everybody's lovable grouch. Then myself and Andrew will be filling some time. Join in for that if you wish. And then Ordy and I should be your nightcap for the evening. And then I finally get to stop for the day, I think, maybe. <sighs> anyway, it's been a long, about seven, ten days in between weather and everything else. But we're back. We're live, and uh, Stacy sent me something that's probably going to make me both happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> oh, things that could have been. Oh, anyway, so you want to talk about it a little bit before I play, or you just want to play? Well, Ron DeSantis decided to go to the um, scene of the crime where protesters, in quotes, went to the University of Florida and tried to start some shit, and they were like, shut down. Um, and so Ron DeSantis went to the University of Florida today and talked directly to the protesters. Here we go. You also see, uh, really disrespectful behavior, uh, at UNC agitators remove the American flag and replace it with a Palestinian flag. Now, how disrespectful is that to people that have fought and died for this country? At George Washington University, uh, some of these agitators desecrated a statue of the father of our country, George Washington. Talk about disrespect for somebody uh, who is really responsible more than anyone else to ensure that we have an America. Uh, even in, uh, in New York City, you have a pro-Hamas people. They go to the World War I memorial and burn the American flag. Uh, just disrespectful conduct. Now, one of the things we've seen around the country is some of the people who are doing this aren't even students of the university. So why would you have people who aren't even students hijack your university for their agenda? That makes no sense whatsoever. So we've seen a lot of failures of leadership. Uh, we've seen uh, some of these schools get overrun. Uh, that is not happening uh, here in the state of Florida. Uh, you are going to behave appropriately, uh, or if not, you're going to be shown the door. If we have a student that would take a janitor hostage like they did at Columbia University, the only appropriate response is that student is expelled immediately. And when you have that, you are not going to see a lot of the nonsense that you see around the country. I, uh, hang on. Oh, what could have been? Blank. What could have been? Uh, All right. Enough of that. <laughs> Hey, I'm, al I'm, al I'm allowed me, to get. It I makes me sad. I'm allowed to get sad that we're, you know, having this geriatric grudge match instead of, you know, anyway. Like I put out on Twitter today, I just think Jimmy Carter is trying, or that Joe Biden is trying to finish what Jimmy Carter started. <laughs> Everybody keeps responding. At least Jimmy Carter's heart was in the right place. Why do you think that? 
because he Jimmy he, Carter's the one that abandoned the Shah and left Iran to the like mullahs that run it now. Why do you think his heart was in the right place? Because he did Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> That's just his liberal white guilt and his you know his bigotry of low expectations, figuring people can't do for themselves. That's what that is. You got to give him free shit. That's what that is. So good job for Jimmy. As Gay Patriot says, he's been in hospice for 444 days. <laughs> oh. The hell is that? That's a man who's made a deal with the devil. No, that's somebody who knows where he's going when he's dying and hanging out, hanging on for everything he can. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I get nothing. Like I, Jimmy Carter literally let our people like sit over in Iran for over a year. Um, he let Americans suffer through gas shortages and inflation and, and mortgage rates near 20%. Like, why do you think he had, why do you think he had, his heart was in the right place? Because, because he built houses for poor people when he left office. Is that it? Yeah, that's why. That That's all I ever hear. Oh, okay. Look at what a good person he is. Look what he did after he was president. Look what he did to the country. Yeah, Don't tell me what a good person he is. Low expectations that he had forever. Like, he was as much a commie as anybody else on the left. Yeah, the only difference is he was actually an anti-abortion commie. Nobody talks about that part either. Well, yeah. Because otherwise, they could have fixed all this thing that they're having a big hullabaloo about, like, forever ago. Because when he came in the first time, he had a super majority in both houses, or pretty damn close. He could have done whatever he wanted to. So if they really wanted to fix Roe v. Wade, they could have done it back then. The difference is they knew he wouldn't sign it. Mm. But Barack Obama had majorities for both for the first two years, and they didn't do anything. But yeah, well, that's part of the reason why. In one of the, one of the first times I did, or like I when I relaunched the afternoon show again, once I made a couple of changes, I spent like an entire show going through all the different times that Democrats had control of everything, what their numbers were, how long it was, and the fact that this is still something that even though it is their biggest issue. They never tried to fix because they knew they could fundraise. Because it's a wedge issue. It. Well, it's a wedge issue, and they knew they could fundraise like crazy off of it. And they still do fundraise like crazy off it, and they get the crazy blue-haired single women out there to vote. Um, it, it's no different than immigration. I think they've actually lost the immigration argument at this point because they pushed it too far. But immigration was always a wedge issue too. That's why it never got fixed. Well, yeah, but it was it was a wedge, it was a wedge issue on both sides because. Both sides actually wanted it for the longest time. It's just the problem is now one side has figured out that they let it go on too long and that if they don't do something to fix it, we're going to lose the country. Uh, that's why you've got um, the Speaker of the House currently right now trying to pass what is basically just going to be a show vote of illegal or illegals can't vote in elections because there are in certain municipalities, etc., the ability for people that are non-citizens, which does not, by the way, cover illegal aliens. But they have the ability to vote in local elections, like for mayors and for school boards, things mm -hmm. like that. But that's why, if you notice, all of these elections are always held at the same time. So how do you know when they're only... Actually, they're not. Well, a lot of them are, as far as the blue cities. The blue yeah, maybe, but like our, pri our primary for like congressional seats is not the same day as the primary for president. Yeah. I mean, I know each state does it differently, but I know here, I mean, I don't have to worry about it as much here because everything's like small town now. But when I, I lived in the city, all of our local elections like bond issues and everything else for the most part would be around the same time that we were doing everything else. Which means if there was a lot of non-citizens, which is only supposed to be for people with like green cards and stuff, by the way, not the people that hop the fence. That's the other thing that I can't, that everybody's like, well, they have the right to vote in this stuff. No, they don't. They don't meet the they don't meet the qualifications. It doesn't say non it doesn't say just non citizens. They have to be non citizens in good standing following our immigration laws. The, there's a whole paragraph of that nobody reads. But since they're here and they're non citizens, well they should be able to vote. Uh no. It's already illegal for illegal aliens to vote, no matter which election, but it doesn't matter. 
and that's why that's why one side is finally freaking out because there's like, I mean, hell, what was it? Eight years ago, everybody thought we had like 11 million. Uh, they were throwing around like 7.7 7 million, and everyone else was like, yeah, it's probably goes for like 11 million. I guarantee you by now it's double. Because it's insane. So if even oh. if even 1% of those people vote, that's enough to swing the election. Depending on where they vote. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have no doubt they're trying to steal it. I mean, you realize that Joe Biden only won the last election despite all the machinations they did by like 40,000 votes in four states, right? Oh, yeah, I know. You only need a tiny fraction of the illegals that have come over the border and ended up in those states because that's where they're sending them to give him 40,000 votes in four states. And best I can tell in these special elections, Republicans have no motivation to come to the polls. Democrats, despite Joe Biden, have been overperforming in special elections. Yeah, what can you say? I can say you better be getting to the polls and bring in everybody you know with you. I would definitely recommend that. That's one of the reasons why mm-hmm. I, that's one of the reasons why I keep telling everybody this like I have to vote my conscience. Look, that's fine, but if we get Biden again, we're pretty much done. Uh-huh. And I mean, I, I well, the thing about it is, this is something that everybody that does this kind of work has been saying for as long, for pretty much as long as I've been doing this kind of work. The problem is, all the dominoes are actually in place this time. I mean, I I have not been able to to pull it up yet, but when I was doing research earlier today and then went to go find it again, I saw across a, a Chiron for I think it was News Nation because I was kind of flipping through and I try to change up the stations that I'm watching as far as news. They had mentioned something about Joe Biden signing something into law that may allow him to, to like completely take control of the National Guard. I don't know because I haven't been able to find it, but if that's even something that's being considered, one, who the hell made that possible? Because that would take both houses to agree on that. So I'm hoping that it was just something that I misread because it flashed across the screen for like a half a second. Then I got distracted and went back to go try to find it. Couldn't find it. But if that is true, and let's assume for the moment that it is, who's the actual dictator here? Well, that's my whole point. So we have him trying to nationalize the National Guard. We have him withholding aid to Israel that was passed by Congress, which I believe President Trump was impeached for. Pretty much. In terms of Ukraine. We have him using federal agencies to do voter registration in partnership with Soros organizations based on an executive order. Um, Oh, there's like three more. Um, Oh, they've started reaching out to the social media companies on misinformation ahead of the election again. Um, Oh, there was another big one. And it's slipping my mind because there's so many. He's done the student loan thing in contravention of SCOTUS. And there's another big one. He's doing so much of this. I literally can't keep track of them all. Yeah, one of these days I'm going to have to say Oh, that. oh, this is what it is. They're trying to take the executive orders and he, that he's done and somehow sew them up in a way that Donald Trump can't undo them day one like Joe Biden did with Donald Trump's. Well, I mean, the other thing is technically he wasn't supposed to be able to do that in the first place. <laughs> but anyway, um, at least based on – Well, pre- I mean they, they took him to court for trying – for when Donald Trump untri- tried to undo DACA and DAPA, they took him to court to stop him from doing Ill- – undoing illegal executive orders done by President Obama. Oh, so, I, I know. But that's what, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. That precedent was already set. So why was Joe Biden able to do those things? Because nobody was going to take him to court. Hmm. Hmm. You have to have standing. 
the people who were on DACA and waiting for DAPA decisions took Trump to court. Yeah, it wasn't the Democrats. I guess you have a point there. But it's just like, this is insane, people. I mean, all of it's insane if you ask me, but I don't know. Yeah. I think my son just got back on his computer again. Mm. I'm going to have to have a chat with this boy. Luckily, the the server the the broadcast stuff never really goes down. It just makes it really hard for me to get to my notes and stuff. <laughs> Good thing I have a decent memory. <laughs> right. Oh wait, there there it goes. Maybe that right. was just a hiccup. Oh, I was trying to. I had another story I wanted to talk about, but the screen wasn't loading anymore, and I'm like, what is going on? Oh wait, yeah, nope. There goes that one. I'm definitely going to have to figure out what he's done to his computer because it's good for about 30 minutes or so. And then it just says, yeah, you can't get on the Internet anymore, sir. And it's, it, the weird thing is it's like a cascade failure. Hmm. Well, you'll have to beat your son later. Yeah, well, I'll deal with that once I get G up and running. I kind of figured out when we when I told him that I was pretty sure that was the problem. That he would know that man. He needed to stay off his computer for the night. Apparently, I was mistaken. <clears throat> but what do I know? Right. Anyway, so gotta cheat and use my phone. Cheat and use your phone. Well, I don't know, but like, I don't understand how Joe Biden has done this executive order on the election stuff, which people have been raising the alarms on forever. And when Congress says, uh, what are you doing? He cannot answer. Congress authorized those agencies. Congress has oversight of those agencies. They should be able to get a full list of the activities they're undertaking without even thinking about it. I mean, you would think. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's the whole reason we have that branch of government. Well, and then I've got... You see this thing to go through my feet. <gasps> Arabella is a dark money group that's doing X. Yeah, Arabella has been. I've been writing about Arabella since 2017. Thanks for joining me, folks. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. How do I write for these little outlets and get no traction? And then some guy does a big special, like ta da. And I'm like, no kidding. That's like they're like uh, they're talking about Act Blue and all. Like yeah, no kidding. Like I was on that. James O'Keefe was on that. You guys probably don't even know what the Action Network is. The Action Network is the one that gets all these people on the street. They couldn't have done BLM without the the Action Network. And it's all funded by dark money through Tides and Arabella. Like this is not news. Why haven't you figured out how to build an organization of something similar on the right? You fight fire with fire. You don't fight fire bitching about it. Ugh. Eh, you know, what are you going to do? See, filter gone. Filter gone. Filter. But it's like, okay, so sit there and complain about it. What are you going to do? Filters are overrated anyway. Mm. Don't growl at me. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh, it's weird. I don't know. My Twitter's working. That's working. But I can't get any of the news sites to come up. This is really weird. I can pull up on my, on my phone, so I know it has to be an IP conflict going on between my son's computer and mine. But I don't know what he's done to his setting to make it static. Hmm. Well, you'll have to beat him. beat him later. Anyway, we got about five minutes left. What do you want to talk about for the last five minutes? Uh, I'd like to talk about something fun that doesn't piss me off. <laughs> I mean, this is this is whatever. That's pretty much what we talk about is what pisses me off. Yeah, I know. I could talk about gardening, but that's my other podcast. Yeah, Al's not here. <laughs> no, no. I thought he was in chat. No, Mr. Al here. 
He may be in chat. I don't yeah, know. I know. But he may be in chat. No, done. Know. Done, done, done. Yeah, he's here. My computer's trying to force quit things. I'm just like, what are you doing? Yeah, he's here. <sighs> oh, wait. So there is one thing I want to talk about. Did you did did you hear about RFK Jr. finding and and the whole brain worm thing? That's kind of creepy. I saw the headline, but I have no idea what was being discussed. I only really saw like a thirty second, forty five second blurb on it, and again, half the time when I try to pull up articles today, my computer's like, "Yeah, just play it." Um, but yeah, apparently, a doctor found a dead worm in his brain. Kind of feel like I've seen this movie and TV show before. I have no idea what that means, but I think he just blew his ticket for president. Like yeah. he's not going to take six percent from Joe Biden anymore. Yeah, um, I just I. That's the equivalent of Christy Noem shooting her dog. She needs to get off TV. Dude, I don't know. I don't know what happened with her. <laughs> it's like I I did not have Christian. Dude, she's uh, never she's never been that great. That's what like no she abandoned us on the trans issue. She tried to shut down her state. Her state legislature stopped her, and then she comes out saying she's some kind of COVID hero like DeSantis. And it's like no, you're not. No, you're not. Like maybe she could be ag secretary. Why anybody ever thought she should run for president or be vice president? I do. She's no better. She's no better than Doug Burgum. If he picks Doug Burgum, I'm going to scream. Like, why is there a short list, supposedly, that Doug Burgum is on? I'm telling you, yeah, I'm pretty sure whoever's on Eyebrow, that list. dude? I'm pretty sure whoever is on that list is not actually on his list. I'm just saying. <laughs> Dude reminds me of Bert from Bert and Ernie with the freaking eyebrows. I cannot have Bert from Bert and Ernie as vice president. And supposedly he's really wealthy. Why didn't he get those fixed? Maybe he likes bushy eyebrows. I don't no, know. no one likes those. Nobody. Well, I mean, like you said, he's got the money to fix them. So obviously he must not mind them or he would have fixed them. Well, somebody should have told him. That's like everybody. It's kind of like really wealthy English people who don't fix their teeth. It's like fix your teeth. Well, it's like everybody always asks me why I never had the eye surgery. I'm like, because I've been on the table three times and died twice. No, thank you. I don't want any more surgery. (laughs) Well, but that's fine. But like, there's like a lot of English people are wealthy and they don't fix their teeth. It's like fix your teeth. Bad teeth is a sign of English culture, I guess. I don't know. I mean, we're, I, I mean, have no idea, but it's just like if there's something that glaring about you and you have a lot of money, just fix it. Well, to be fair, we're talking about the same people who eat beans on toast for breakfast. I don't really have a problem with that. I do. When they, they also have a dish called bangers and mash, which I think is funny as hell. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. But I, I have a problem. I have a problem with beans on toast when there's a British dude on TikTok ta- trash talking biscuits and gravy and saying how much better beans on toast is. Dude, you can. Scream. I gotta be with him there. I hate gravy. What is wrong with you? Gravy is meat flavored glue. Hey, Alan, I may need you to take over the show from now on, sir. Because see, see what happens when you make gravy. You mix flour and water, and you put it in meat juice. When you do paper mache, you mix flour and water and dip newspaper in it, and it makes glue. So, gravy is meat-flavored glue. And I've known that ever since I did paper mache as a kid. I don't touch the stuff. I never have. Yeah. No accounting for taste. Although I, I did find it interesting because he's like, so this whole American thing is like super dry baked flour Covered in super wet flour with meat in it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I'm like, and I yes, gotta, gotta and it's absolutely delicious. You would much, you'd be much more likely to find me eating beans on toast than you would find me eating biscuits and gravy. Or beans on biscuits would be okay. I'm starting to think you and I, I'm starting to think you and I would have been on opposite sides in the Revolutionary War. I'm just saying. Well. Why? Because everybody in the Revolutionary War was probably still eating British food. 
they were a colony after all. Yeah, they yeah. drank tea. They drank tea. Well, eventually they they got smart and changed over to coffee. So there's that. Yeah, I can't drink coffee anymore. That sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> so I'm not just I'm not just doing tea. I'm doing herbal tea. Oh God, you're a hippie. <laughs> it's supposed to make me calm. Um, might need more. Yeah, <laughs> I need some adaptogens or something. Uh, all right, tell folks where they can find you, man. You can find me not eating gravy almost any day of the week. <laughs> and you can find me at Scott's Fire on Twitter um, at really odd hours. You can find me scarfing biscuits and gravy pretty much every day of the week if I could. But on that note, we got to get out of here to make room for G. You guys know where to find me by now. I'm not going to spend five minutes telling you. Just follow along on Twitter at RideyRick73. You can figure out the rest later. Bye, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs>